Right on the edge of UNC's campus is the Ackland Art Museum. With the Ackland being home to around 19,000 pieces of art, this may be the image you conjure up when you think of selling high art. Rooms filled to the brim with art specialists, financial advisors, and millionaires all vying for the chance to own incredible pieces of art at a pretty decent price. $400 million is the bid, and the piece is sold. Right now, we're looking at a piece from Kevin McCoy called Quantum. Traditionally, when art goes to auction, bidders will put millions down to have art hang up on walls across the globe. The thing with Quantum is, it won't be hanging up on a wall anytime soon. Instead, it may just sit on Twitter. Why? Well, let's talk about what's so innovative about NFTs. So, Quantum does actually exist, but it's not like any sort of traditional art you've ever seen before. When Quantum was made back in 2014, it was minted as something called a non-fungible token, or an NFT. Yes, those are real words that just came out of my mouth, but what is this? Essentially, what I'm talking about are non-replaceable items on the internet. Fungibility is the idea that something can be easily exchanged. If I buy a dozen eggs from the store, all of those eggs are gonna be used for the same function. I'm gonna go make my little omelet and I'm gonna go about my day. However, for some reason, let's say that this egg has some sort of intrinsic value to me. It has a certain uniqueness to it. It can't be replaced. It becomes non-fungible. Father? Is that you? Father? Father, no! Food, money, identical pairs of white socks. These are all interchangeable goods. Congratulations, you've passed the non-fungible part of NFT. But the T, the token, what does that mean? Well, it gives NFTs their credibility. For example, I couldn't go draw this picture of a squirrel, give it to my friend online, and then say, wow, I just made my first NFT. That's not how this works. But with something called the blockchain, we could turn this into an NFT. The blockchain itself is a public online ledger that keeps track of every single transaction that occurs on it with hundreds of thousands of computers working tandemly. So if we take this piece of art, which we'll creatively call Reese Eggy, and put it on a blockchain to sell, the back and forth selling and buying of this art is gonna be tracked by every computer that uses the blockchain. If a buyer decides, gee, I'll use my cryptocurrency to buy this token on a blockchain, the computers will check with every other computer to make sure the token has the right ownership and that the buyer has enough crypto to buy it. Once the transaction goes through, it's now out for everybody on the blockchain to see that Eggman001 just bought this random picture of an egg online for cryptocurrency worth like 20 bucks. But wait, hold on, let's slow down, slow down for a second. A picture of an egg on the internet was just bought with internet money. Why would I not just... You remember Kevin McCoy's Quantum? This was made in 2014 and it was the first NFT ever created. It's just code, and in June, it sold for $1.4 million. One, it is a piece of history. It was the first ever artwork that was also an NFT. People want to be part of communities. You know, there's only, if there's only a fixed number of people that can ever be in that community, then suddenly that, that membership has value. So in CryptoPunks case, you've got 10,000 items. It's basically like saying, we have 10,000 gold ingots. People will then go, yeah, but gold has an intrinsic value and NFTs don't, which is bollocks. Gold has value simply because people believe it has value. I think they will work for a mainstream audience, but not for a good few years yet, because there's a lot of aspects of the technology side that are not ready. Um, and they won't be ready for five to 10 years, in my view. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. And NFTs are changing all the time. Art series like CryptoPunks or Bored Ape Yachts sell for millions every week. This sold for 69 million in March. NFTs are new and crazy and absurd and expensive. Not everyone can casually buy and sell million dollar pieces of art. So what happens now? This new technology isn't just art. So what else can NFTs do? The answer is whatever you can think of. Okay, so you don't wanna buy a million dollar crypto punk online. Well, what about your favorite concert ticket from an artist you really, really like? Or your favorite Even moment from an NBA bitch. game? And look like he couldn't believe it. Shoulders. NFTs have the ability to create communities centered around buying and selling nothing but non-fungible tokens. And one community is doing it better than anyone else. <laughs> Pudgy Penguins is a video game where players can buy and sell different penguins through the game. NFT-based games are growing in mass and they're leading to something big online communities where users can trade cryptocurrency, digital art, assets, and so much more. NFTs are leading to this entirely digital world we know as the metaverse. But that is a story for another time. 
NFTs are just one facet of this whole world of emerging tech we're discovering here at Recent Innovation Lab. Discover it with us and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe on YouTube. I'll see you next time.